Praised be Jesus and Mary. Today's saint, Francis Xavier, was born in Spain in 1506. He studied liberal arts in Paris and there met St. Ignatius of Loyola and became a follower, his, a follower of his in the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. In 1537, he was ordained at Rome and devoted himself to works of charity. He then became a missionary to the Far East in 1541, where for 10 years he tirelessly proclaimed the gospel in India and then Japan, and through his preaching brought many to the faith in Christ. He died in 1552 near the China coast on the island of San Sian. St. Francis Xavier was a, a zealous missionary. For this, he is most well known and converted countless numbers of people to Christ and to his church. And this leads us to a, an Advent reflection, uh, an Advent reminder of the fact that in the fullness of time, the Son of God truly became the Son of Man, the Son of Mary. And God took on a human nature and became man. And to those who accept him and believe in him, Christ, the God-man, gives the power to become children of God. It's important never to, never to lose sight of that. That something really happens when a person ac accepts and believes in Christ. So something happened with the coming of Christ and to all those who believe in Christ, who are baptized into Christ, who are followers of Christ, something really happens. They become children of God. And something also really doesn't happen and doesn't change when somebody doesn't know Christ and doesn't accept Christ and doesn't live in Christ. They do not become children of God. And for this reason, all religions are not the same. And for this reason, St. Francis Xavier went to the Far East to preach Christ, to baptize in the name of Christ in order to give everybody that divine sonship to which they are called, but which we acquire only through the sacraments, only through our faith in Christ, only through membership in his church. It's a good Advent reminder to remind ourselves of the, of the gift that we've received and of the fact that something has changed when we became Christians, when we were baptized, when we began to profess Christ. And, and a reminder also to, uh, to us that, um, that we have something beautiful to share with, uh, with, with society and, and the world in which we live. Because if we believe that something actually happens, when we believe in Christ, that we actually become children of God, well, if we truly love our neighbor, uh, this is something we should share with, with him or her. Many times it's through no fault of their own that people remain ignorant of, of our Lord and of uh, the gift of divine filiation, divine sonship. So um, this isn't a, a homily about um, where the blame is to be put. But people, sometimes through no fault of their own, can remain ignorant of the, of, of the very fact that they have a father, a God who is a father to them a God who wants them to be their children, a God who has given them an inheritance, an imperishable inheritance in heaven. If we're made in the image of, and likeness of God, that, that, that image somehow, um, in a certain sense, can cre creates us, makes us who we are. And, um, uh, and all those who, who don't know the true image of God don't know their own identity and... and, and and without it, they live a life inferior to the truth, inferior to the vocation to which they're called, and very often it becomes a life that's self-destructive. And, and if we fail in our duty to kind of share the, the, the truth with, with our brothers and sisters, uh, if we don't uh, share the gospel, then either we believe that nothing changes, all religions are equal, and we should ask ourselves, what's the point of us being here in this chapel? We could be doing a lot more... A lot, a lot of other things, you know, like even sleeping, it's still early. Uh, why, if nothing changes, then, 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 you know, why be Christian? Or if we do believe that something changes, but we don't share that, that, that knowledge with, uh, with, with, with somebody else, with, with our brothers and sisters, then we perhaps love ourselves more than we love God, more than we love neighbor. 
that tolerance is actually a veiled, a veiled disguise for our own fear, for our inability to overcome our fear, for our inability to, to become to become um, uh, to overcome political correctness and and, and all these uh, and all these um, modern day dogmas. And it's strange that today, uh, precisely for preaching the gospel, will be called divisive and non-inclusive and, and unwelcoming, where it's precisely this, this, uh, this universal brotherhood in Christ that we preach. We invite everybody to become our brothers and sisters in Christ, a brotherhood that never, uh, that never perishes, uh, an, everlasting, uh, an everlasting family that, that has its uh, duration for all, for all eternity in heaven. We, uh, we, we try to welcome everybody into the kingdom of heaven. We try to uh, include everybody in, the, in, in, in God's plan of salvation. So this is actually a, a most inclusive and welcoming and, and charitable thing to do, as St. Francis Xavier did. So his example reminds us that with Christ, something changes and something big changes. And without Christ, likewise, nothing changes and the most important thing that doesn't change is that people do not become sons and daughters of God and they risk missing out on their inheritance, their eternal inheritance in heaven. It's a grave duty of ours to, to preach the gospel, each one of us in his own circumstances, and uh, to show our conviction that with the gift that we've received, something has changed, something precious that we want to keep and that we want to announce to others as well. Praised be Jesus and Mary.